rest of it is mostly just get out, film, get to know the city a bit, trying to meet the locals. It's pretty nice, yeah. And I won't be able to go to Germany. I'm flying straight from Lyon to Morocco to attend the US visa meeting to get my US visa finally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, kind of. I'm trying to work on something like, you know, skateboarding is you're always in a challenge with yourself, trying to get better and better every day. And since I was growing up skating, the main goal is always to stack footage and then you will see what you are going to do with it. But footage is always important to have. <laughs> Uh, after I moved, when I started living in Perpignan, I was living with a, with like a skate association kind of that took a little bit care of me. I met them before in Morocco and uh, there's this guy called Julio Sola. He works for the French distribution V7 and he's from Perpignan actually. And the, the distribution is in Paris, but he had like his kids in Perpignan and stuff. So he's going back and forth and I just met him and he heard about me or whatever. So clips in the skate park, hit me up, start talking and then he just hooked me up with Ethnis, Blind. Uh, Tensor, Rick the Wheels, he just like gave me a whole like proper sponsorship kind of and then little by little he started talking to Ethnis about it and stuff and Ethnis was working on the Ethnis album video and yeah they invited me for the video premiere in Paris, went there, met the guys, got along with them pretty well and just like kept working on since then. I tried, I tried a lot of sports before skateboarding for sure, but like, you know, in Morocco the main sport is football as everywhere more or less, but I remember I grew up in a neighborhood really close by the football stadium and like in Morocco there's a lot of hooligans with football and stuff and I like, grew up watching all these people fight and stuff and it wasn't that fun, you know, like you, you do sport or whatever it is, what you do for fun and like for having more social things with other groups and stuff and I didn't find that in any other sport apart from skateboarding, you know, when I got to, to the spot no one was judging me, people were just welcoming me and it felt nice, found a family. <laughs> We're just a bunch of kids, like, and back in the days, I remember, like, uh, all the crew was into, like, rock and roll, metal, or whatever, you know, we all, like, used to dress with, like, skinny pants and have, like, a metal chain hanging out, and we just, like, wanted to go to that other city to skate a bit, and straight when we got out of the train, people were not used to see, like, kids with crazy, like, haircuts and dressed like that, all black, it just seemed kind of weird for them, so we just, like, got caught by the cops telling us that we're satanics or lunatics or whatever and we just had to call like the dad of one of our friends that knew some policeman or whatever and it was all fine at the end. <laughs> When I started skating, like I heard about all these people like that used to skate in the 90s in Morocco and like all these legends, you know, that we had there and they've been killing it. Like you get to a spot and you hear that this dude did that long ago and you're like, where did he get the board side? Like, but yeah, when I started skating, there were already a lot of killers there and I had a bunch of friends that took me under their wing and they started hooking me up with stuff. and. Yeah, it wasn't that hard to keep skating, you know, we have a lot of good spots and the weather is nice. And like, actually, like, since 2011 or something, people were not really caring about skateboarding, you know. They would see like skaters doing their thing, we wouldn't even get kicked out, you know. They would be like, oh, you're just skaters doing their thing, you know. Like as long as, because there's so many other sketchy things going on that the last thing they want to worry about is like a skater, you know. Yeah, actually the change now in Morocco is pretty gnarly. Like, I remember when I moved out in 2015, 2016, I moved out from Morocco, we didn't have any skate park. We had like one skate park maybe in Tanger that was private and a couple in Agadir that was like six hours from my city or whatever. And now just in my city, there's like seven skate parks. There's so many skate parks all around. Even my parents tell me like, ah, oh, we, we see a bunch of kids, little girls going to, to school in the morning with some penny boards or whatever, you know, like people are getting used to see like skaters more and more. So now it's, it's becoming a thing there too.
since always, I've always like thought about my dad as a role model. Like he's like our hero in the family, and like what he have done in his life in general. That's like have always been a motivation for me to do something with skateboarding. Like since I, since I had the opportunity to come live here in Europe, like I just arrived here. I don't have no family here, nothing. It's just like from nothing. I like my parents kind of sending me money. It wasn't that hard. Like. It wasn't as hard as what my dad passed through, you know, for sure. But it just like gave me more power to try to be a tiny bit like him, you know. <laughs> it meant like more than the word, like just like. Basically, for me, just being in Europe is more than a dream because, like, growing up in Morocco, it's every Moroccan's dream is to come to Europe and find a job or whatever. Like, it's the European dream, you know. And, like, then seeing my name on the shoe and just when they offered me that, I was like, straight. I wanted to put like the Moroccan flag colors and I wanted to put a WS for like white spot where I grew up and stuff. And this is just like, I don't know. I'm just trying to give back, kind of, and trying to deserve also the opportunities I have because it's just. There's no word to describe like how it felt, you know, it's just mind-blowing, insane. <laughs> Uh, basically, like at first, I thought about doing uh, the little the little edit in Morocco in White Spot, but due to all the COVID restrictions and stuff, we couldn't do that. So we tried to find a spot that is quite similar, all marble kind of, and a spot that had also like a bit everything ledges, stairs, like. And uh, Crete was a pretty nice idea, I think. And uh, yeah, we spent five days there. It rained in the morning. One morning it rained, but yeah, I was just getting back from an injury and stuff. It was quite stressful, but I'm glad it worked out well. Like actually, the non inward back tail big spin flip. It was the first time I do it. The first time I try it actually. Yeah, it was like even the switch heel down the the big set. Not even one switch heel was turning well. Not even one. And the one that turned well, I got it. Like it was just like all luck. Seriously, it was like the planets were aligned. <laughs> So I, all, I also just got my French visa sorted out. That's how I will be able to stay in Europe for a bit longer. That's such a release, you know. That's why I moved out from Barcelona, went back to France so that I can like sort this out. And now that it's done, I will attend the visa meeting. And uh, my best friend Matisse is gonna come come over to Biarritz to live with me there. And then we're gonna go to the US for three months during winter. And it's gonna be my first time there. And that's why I asked Matisse, my best friend. I was like, mm, this is way too stressful for me. Do you wanna join? Like. Let's go together and it was keen as fuck. Best dude to have around, like funny, lovely. He he always like cares about other people. Just best friend, you know. <laughs>